Hey everyone, you're watching We Had That, and today I'm going to talk about the 1985 Wave 4 G.I. Joe Bazooka action figure. 1985 was a famously awesome year for G.I. Joe. As I've said in a couple of my other reviews for figures from Wave 4, there was some serious competition for my attention and my dollars when this wave came out. Although I was most excited about the Dreadnoughts, Bazooka was one of the other figures that found his way onto my team back in 1985, but he was never really at the top of my list of favorites, and as a result, he spent a lot of time sitting back at the base. Bazooka was one of G.I. Joe's anti-armor specialists. According to his file card, his real name was David Katzenbogen, and he originally drove an Abrams tank in the 3rd Armor Division. His file card also states that the 3rd Armor was called the 3rd Horde, well, there really was a 3rd Armor Division from 1941 until 1992, but it was actually nicknamed the 3rd Herd, not the 3rd Horde. I'm not sure if that change was intentional or a mistake by whoever wrote the text for the file card. His file card goes on to say that David realized one day an illiterate farmer armed with a $200 disposable rocket launcher could knock out a million-dollar tank with less than two weeks' training. That's when he started to rethink what he was doing in the Army and put in for a transfer. Even as a kid, most of my favorite G.I. Joe figures were the ones who looked like they were wearing military uniforms. It always kind of bugged me that Bazooka wore a bright red shirt. That seemed like it would have made him one heck of a target in battle. His red shirt with the number 14 appears to be the football jersey of former New England Patriots player Steve Grogan. I wasn't a sports guy, so that didn't impress me. Aside from his shirt, Bazooka's outfit did look pretty military. He wore olive green pants with pockets on the sides and a lighter green belt with a couple of pouches. He had gray boots and green wristbands. The wristbands look like those generic elastic wristbands that athletes wore in the 70s and 80s, except they didn't go all the way around the wrists. How did they stay on? His green helmet looked relatively military to me as well. It had a good amount of detail, and you could tell that there was supposed to be a cloth cover over the helmet. His backpack was pretty cool, too. It was the same olive green as his pants. It had a few pouches and a canteen molded on, plus four missiles for his black missile launcher, which was the weapon included with the figure. In 1988, a repainted version of Bazooka was released as part of the Tiger Force series, the molds for this new figure and all of the accessories were the same as the 85 bazooka. They were just molded and painted in different colors. Even the package art seems to have been simply recolored to match the new figure. Was bazooka in the G.I. Joe cartoon? Absolutely. After two five-part miniseries by Sunbow, one in 1983 and one in 1984, the G.I. Joe cartoon series launched just in time to promote the 1985 line of action figures. Bazooka showed up a fair amount in the series. He's even mentioned in the title of one episode, Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent, in which Bazooka sees a sea serpent. Strangely, Bazooka's file card describes him as a fast thinker, but his character in the cartoon was quite the opposite. He was typically portrayed as being kind of a dumb brute. I feel like whoever wrote the Sunbow stories didn't really care much about the history, comic book appearances, or file cards for these figures. They just did whatever they wanted, with no regard to the personalities or skills of the characters. For example, on Bazooka's file card, it says he's qualified as an explosives disposal expert. But in the episode Cobra Quake, there are constant references to Bazooka having trouble disarming various explosives. For some reason, Sunbow also decided to make Bazooka's helmet and pants tan instead of green. That seems like a strange decision, but you could still tell it was supposed to be Bazooka. He was drawn extremely well, and let's face it, he was the only guy wearing a red football jersey into battle. Right from the start, Bazooka was often paired with Alpine, another character from the 1985 wave, and the two made a pretty good team. In the first episode, the pair led a squad of Joes flying around with jetpacks to fight against Cobra. In the second episode, Bazooka and Alpine were driving the hovercraft, and in the third episode, the pair had a relatively large role where they climbed a mountain, started an avalanche, and fought a vicious pack of bloodthirsty seals? Both with and without Alpine, Bazooka appeared fairly often for the rest of the first season. His appearances were brief at times, but you couldn't miss him in his bright red New England Patriots jersey. 
Although Bazooka was featured a good bit in the Sunbow cartoon, he had very few appearances in the 1980s Marvel comic book series. His first and most significant appearance was in issue number 44 from February of 1986, where he and several of the other new Joe team members and vehicles are introduced. In this issue, training exercises are interrupted by Dr. Mindbender's android bats who attack the Joes. Dr. Mindbender basically kidnaps the Joe team and their vehicles and puts them in a giant maze to prove to Destro and the Baroness that his new weapon is awesome. But, of course, the G.I. Joes beat Mindbender and his bats in the end. Bazooka's big scenes are one, almost getting shot, and two, throwing the giant cannon from the Striker at a Cobra Stinger because they don't have any ammunition. After his introduction, Bazooka appeared in about a dozen of the regular G.I. Joe comics, but he was often only in a panel or two. Sometimes he was prominently featured, but just as frequently, he was just a background character or maybe a face in a big crowd of Joes. Aside from his first appearance, his only other appearance of any note was in issue number 78 from October of 1988, where he was one of the Joes on a mission to rescue Hawk and General Hollingsworth. Bazooka and the rest of the rescue team were in disguise, so he wasn't in his usual green pants and red football jersey in this issue. The appearance is noteworthy because he was shot in the arm, which is the most action Bazooka had seen in the comics since his introduction almost three years earlier. In the entire run of G.I. Joe's special missions, I believe there's only one image of Bazooka. On page four of issue 27, Bazooka looks like he's just dropped a case of bullets, and that's about it for the special missions comics. Like every other G.I. Joe character who was out at the time, Bazooka had a page in the G.I. Joe Order of Battle comic book with the text from his file card and a single image of the character. Even though Bazooka wasn't included much in the G.I. Joe comics, he did appear on the cover of the 1985 book Operation Robot Assassin, which was the fourth book from the G.I. Joe Find Your Fate series. Also, for some reason Bazooka appeared in the artwork on a lot of the G.I. Joe toy packages. In 1985, he was on the box art for the Silver Mirage motorcycle, the transportable tactical battle platform, and the air defense battle station. In 1986, Bazooka was featured on the box of the LCV recon sled, which is interesting since there was an entire new wave of characters that could have been included here. It kind of makes me wonder if the LCV was an early vehicle in 1986, and the art was done before the new character designs were finished. Speaking of new character designs, the boxes for the Tiger Shark, Tiger Rat, and Tiger Sting all feature the Tiger Force version of Bazooka from 1988. I don't think that Bazooka ever would have been a favorite character of mine, but with all the competition he had from other amazing figures in 1985, he didn't have a chance of making it to the top of my list that year. I appreciate him more now than I did at the time, but even today, he's overshadowed by so many other really cool figures from that year. What do you think about Bazooka? Did you have a Bazooka figure as a kid? Did he rock it to the top of your list of favorite Joes, or sit on the bench while the rest of your team saw all the action? Tell me in the comments below. Also, please give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell so that I can let you know when I post new videos. And one last thing, if you're a fan of toys, you should know about Toylanta, the biggest toy show in the southeastern United States, held annually just north of Atlanta, Georgia. Visit toylanta.com for more information. As always, thanks for watching.